Hello and welcome to Best Disc Golf Discs video guide series. Today we're going to be talking about choosing the right disc golf driver weight. We're going to be covering the relationship between disc speed and flight distance, the impact of disc weight on speed and distance, and also some problems to avoid as you go through the disc selection process. Now let's get started. There are lots of opinions on this topic, but we'd rather start off with some hard data. And the data source we're using for this portion of the analysis is a study done by Theo Pazzi. It was done in the year 2000 on factors affecting disc golf flight distance. He did the study at a disc golf distance driving contest, and he got a lot of key measurable data, including player level, disc mold and brand, disc weights, and release velocity, which we're defining as the speed of a disc in miles per hour upon release from the hand. Unfortunately, during this study, the range of disc weights was very narrow, only 165 to 175 grams. But what we're most interested in is the release velocity data, which he captured with a radar gun for every throw conducted. This chart shows the actual mapping of his data. Along one axis, you can see the distance in feet. Along the other axis, you can see the release velocity of that throw. And it's clear that there's a very strong correlation between the release velocity speed and the ultimate distance that the disc flew. When you take a close look at the data, what you'll see is that at a release velocity between 40 and 70 miles per hour, which covers about 90% of players, one additional mile per hour of speed on average yields 7.2 feet of additional distance. So in example, if you have a player throwing 45 miles an hour, they add 5 miles an hour to their release velocity up to 50 miles an hour, they're going to add an average of 36 feet to their flight. Now this is great intellectual data, but what you may be asking yourself is how do I actually get the incremental 5 miles per hour in release velocity so I can realize the additional distance? To we'll learn that, we're going to go take a visit to our blackboard to study force and acceleration. What we're specifically going to be looking at is required acceleration force. Think of this as how much energy does it take to accelerate a disc for a throw. Using physics formulas, we know empirically that the amount of energy it takes to throw a 175 gram disc 50 miles per hour is the same amount of energy it takes to throw a 155 gram disc 56.5 miles per hour. So you reduce the weight by 20 grams, you add 6.5 miles per hour, and in theory, gain 47 feet of additional distance. This raised two immediate questions for us. One, does science equal reality? Two, will a light disc carry? For example, can I throw a baseball farther than a bowling ball? Yes. Can I throw a ping pong ball farther than a baseball? No. Even though the ping pong ball has lighter weight, there's a point at which the reduced mass has a negative return effect versus the wind resistance it's going to experience. How does that balance out with disc selection? Well, let's find out. To look at another data point, we know that Simon Lazat recently broke the world's record for the fastest recorded disc golf throw at 89.5 miles per hour. What disc did he do it with? A 130 gram wraith. Extremely light disc used, and I think there's no coincidence there that that was the disc that he was allowed to break the world's record with. Simon also has another world record throw at 95 miles per hour, and this was accomplished with a guts disc. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's approximately the same size as an end of a condor, which I don't think anyone would accuse of being a fast flying disc. But the difference in this case is a guts disc is 110 grams. So, following through with the examples we've seen in the past, 20 gram lighter disc yielded 5.5 mile per hour faster world record. Does science equal reality? I think that's pretty compelling evidence that it does. So now back to our second question, will a light disc carry? For this we'll look at a third data point which is the two longest ever recorded throws, both of which over 800 feet and both of which completed with discs under 160 grams, including the 836 foot throw with a 134 gram boss. So, will a light disc carry? Absolutely. Does this mean I should buy the lightest weight version of my current favorite driver? Absolutely not. And let's talk about why. Let's say you're playing with an Avenger SS, a fairly understable disc at 174 grams with a release velocity of 50 miles per hour and you're getting a nice consistent 
S turn with good distance. If you take that same Avenger SS, drop the weight to 150 grams, most likely what you're going to see is a speed increase to 56 miles per hour. What we know from our study on disc selection is that more speed equals more turnover and your net yield is going to be a much less desirable flight pattern. To solve this, when you're moving to lighter weight discs, you will most likely need to select a driver that's more stable than what you're currently using. So for example, if you were to switch to the overstable crank at 150 grams, that disc is most likely going to straighten back out, give you the turn that you're looking for, and yet yield extra distance in the process. So for disc selection, we have two main points. Number one, increase stability as you decrease weight. And number two, choose the right weight for the wind at your course. Because almost everything in disc selection is a trade-off, the trade-off for disc weight is wind resistance. Less disc weight equals less resistance to the wind. If the flight of a 160 gram disc with a cross breeze looks like this, the flight of a 150 gram disc in that same breeze is going to look something more like this, pushed off further to the right, and with a 140 gram disc, even further to the right. When you're selecting your discs, more wind equals more weight needed to compensate. You may be giving up a little distance, but ultimately you're going to get a much straighter throw and a net better result. Disc weight selection with a headwind or a tailwind is going to be largely dependent on the disc's glide rating, but that is another video. So we hope this helps. Please check out our website at bestdiscgolfdiscs.com and please let us know what you'd like to see, either in the comments section below or in the feedback section on our website. We're always looking to bring better videos for you and we'd love to hear what you'd like to see. Until then, have a great round.